Hey guys, and this is what it's all about. This is from our garden. This is grown recently since the freezing weather began. And there's more on the plant still to come. Well, that is nice. We've got onions growing in our own garden. Now some of these are from the store, but some are from the uh, garden. And we've got, uh, I didn't, we don't have them in here, but Melanie Harvest, the baby purple potatoes as needed. And we just had a meal full of purple potatoes. And what else do we have, Melanie, from our garden today? In that, we had something else. Yesterday we had a salad with tomatoes from our garden. So we are definitely eating food from our own garden now. And, uh, yeah, it's all worthwhile in the end. It's all definitely worth it in the end. Hey, guys. It's 2.30 in the afternoon. Just finished lunch. I was feeling really sick today still, but I had work to do. I'll try to get out of the wind here. Um, I had work to do, and uh, a friend of mine has two dump truck loads full of logs, whole logs, which he told me if I help him cut the logs, he'll give me some of the wood. And this was some of the cured um, hardwood that he let me take home. I'm, I'm cutting for him and for me, and uh, he's allowing me to take some home. So I spent the entire morning away cutting logs over there and then brought over a little bit that was cured and um, I'll explain the shortness of the logs here in a little bit my battery's running low and I'm just using it up explaining and catching up until then uh, and then I'll swap batteries anyway um, was gone all day and then he came over here and helped me there's one of the I don't know if that shows in the camera one of the paper wasps is hanging out by my wood pile which is bad um, that worries me. But anyway, let me show you what's been going on here at the homestead since we got back. Okay, there's the remains of the paper wasp nest. It's just the outer shell. It's pretty much beat up and knocked down. And there's some very disturbed and angry paper wasps still hovering around. So... I'm being very careful, but we sprayed it with poison heavily. The um, combs are down here. I'm not going to get close to them, but the stuff is down here. So I have stuff here sitting here that I couldn't get near since I got stung for a week. Finally, I can start cleaning up. I'm going to give it the rest of the today before I get too close. Um, there's one looking at me right now. I got goosebumps just from the fear of it. I'm really worried. I don't, I don't want to get hurt. So I'm going to carefully back away from this. Um, they're still looking around. There's, there's some that are coming back to the nest trying to find it, and they're not pleased. But my friend used a very, very, very long pole and uh, knocked it down and then sprayed it. Well, I kept a very good distance. Now over here is an angry nest of yellow jackets. I don't know what the camera shows because I can't see the display. It's too sunny out for me. Now all those boards right there are what I was carefully stacking up and moving out of the way so I could get those cement blocks. And um, the boards fell over after I stacked them neatly up there. They fell over and that's when uh, I got stung twice real fast. Now, they're all mad today because my friend used a stick, a long pole, and knocked the boards out, and then sprayed it with poison, uh, an entire can of poison. It's odd because the wasps are hovering, but they're not going in. It's really weird. They're just hanging out. If you sit here and watch for a minute, they're all just hovering the entire time. So, I, they don't like that poison, and they're not going in, but they're not going away either. Anyway, there's that one. We hope to, in the next day or so, finish destroying that nest. I am not playing around. Melanie got stung once by these already. I didn't know there was a nest here, and I got stung twice. No games here. Can't risk it with a baby on the way. Uh, back to the firewood. So it's two dump truck loads of logs. It's a lot of logs. And I was over there all morning cutting. And then we loaded up. He gave me some dry, uh, cured 
logs for myself for my trouble and I'm gonna get a whole lot more of the uh, green wood but you know you help people and they help you and that's how it works out here I love the country anyway these are in the Sun to, to dry out they're old cured but just damp from well it's normal so I'm gonna split them and that'll be for warmth for this winter hey guys um, I, I don't probably look as bad as I was yesterday or whatever I was still really sick this morning had a rough rough night I didn't sleep well because I had pain all over now the wasp well, there's a little bit of redness the uh, yellow jackets you'd never know it was there it's amazing. There's a tiny little red dot where I got stung, or was it here? Yeah, you know what? I'm not even sure now. I think it might have been here. Yeah, there's a tiny little red dot where it was, and here I can't quite see. But um, I used, I took a Benadryl immediately, and yesterday I wasn't clear enough in my head to tell you because I was so sick from the other venom attack. Immediately took a Benadryl. Then I put baking soda on and water on both wounds. Let that, you know, I kept it damp for, I, I don't know, I lost grasp of time really, but I kept that damp. And then I took wild plantain leaf from the yard. And if you don't know what that is, if I remember, I did a video on wild plantain once. Maybe I'll link that up if I remember. If not, ask me, and I'll drag that old video up and show you um, the benefits of wild plantain, how to find it, how to identify it. It's very good for you. Um, it draws the venom out of stings. Now, when I got hit by the other wasp, I wasn't clear in my head. I mean, my whole world was pain. And it put me down. And so, I didn't think to take care of myself properly. I ended up in the emergency room. These here were minor in comparison. I put the baking soda on, then later the plantain. You chew it up, and the um, uh, saliva mixes with the plantain leaf. Cause the chemical reaction, put it on your wound and it draws venom out. I don't know if it's the drugs I'm on. I'm on three pills a day. Or if it's what I did. But I'm fine. There's nothing wrong. Now I'm still red all over and feeling really sick and dizzy today from the previous thing. This morning was bad. Running a chainsaw maybe wasn't wise, but I've got to get it done. Anyway, it seems to have worked. And uh, so there's that. I'm feeling better today. Uh, still the venom in me is, is bad, but I mean as far as these go, no problem. So whatever worked, I'm not sure. Melanie got stung two weeks ago by one of these wasps, these uh, yellow jackets. She's got a spot in her leg about that big that was inflamed and itching forever. And I didn't learn about baking soda until later. And I didn't know she got stung until sometime later that day, so I never consider I wouldn't have been able to help her because I wasn't there. There's yellow jackets trying to get in the house now. They're terrible out here. Anyway, so uh, looking better. I'm, I'm still struggling with the health issue, but uh, you know, I'm working. Taking, taking it easier, but working. Trying to get things done. There are the little wild cats. They're very, very wild. Like we can't get near them. They're beautiful long-haired cats. They're nervous because they see me here. But, uh, yeah, we can't get close to them for anything. We give them a little food now and then. Wish we could tame them. They're beautiful. Hey guys, just for info, uh, the reason I'm cutting my firewood so small is for $20 I picked up this little potbelly wood stove. Um, a friend of mine is fixing the one, it's got two cook plates. Many of you may recognize it looks just like the one I had in my camper back in the day and it's the exact same size and the same price I paid for that one back then. Uh, this was $20 for this little potbelly wood stove and um, it needed a little work and so I got a friend he, who can weld he's hopefully gonna fix it for me anyway this is what we will end up using most likely here in the chalet I have it sitting in here for now and um, that's why 
I'm starting to cut the firewood a little bit shorter for when we start heating in the winter hopefully this will be the main source of heat um yeah I guess that's it I never thought I'd ever see such a thing again as that one I had in pine bush and um, I mean what's the chance of that coming to Michigan and finding something just like it it's got the same setup and everything basically I'm experimenting with uh, a deck here and whatever and uh, as you can see, I've got some uh, cement boards sitting against the wall, but it's, I think, going to be a better idea than the big behemoth wood stove because that was designed for 2,400 square feet, and this is about 600 square feet with the ground floor being about three or 400 square feet. Therefore, um, there's no way, no way we could have used that big wood stove. So hopefully this will be the solution. Um, this is sealed better than the one I had in Pine Bush at first glance anyway. That one there had um, air leaks down here and up here and these were not tight. So hopefully this will work out better for us this winter. Anyway, that's the plan. So you'll be seeing me cutting firewood in the, few, in the next days and it's going to be cut small to fit this because it only fits an 8 inch long by 5 inch round log maximum. So we'll see how it works. We had to take the drawers out of our tiny house today because they had had um, mothballs in them the whole time, probably for years, and they stunk like mothballs when we opened them up. We're moving into our tiny house slash chalet, and um, I read online that mothballs, well, for one thing, they're a nervous system toxin. They're poisonous to your nervous system and they'll kill you. Uh, but the other is that sunlight and air will dissipate the stuff. It evaporates easily and so we left them out here in the sun and hopefully it won't stink anymore. We don't want to put our clothes in mothball smelly drawers. So we'll take them in tonight and see how it smells once they've uh, or obviously outside you can't tell but indoors you'll know. Now, for the last few days, I haven't talked about the garden at all because there's no need. Um, I should water it, though, but we've had relatively decent temperatures, and um, I haven't had to cover them in, in days. I actually think since Saturday when I got stung, I haven't covered them once. Uh, we do have, I don't know if you can see that. Oh, it's a beauty. Look at that, guys. Now that is what it's all about. Huh? Look at that. Look at that, guys. That's what it's about. We are eating tomatoes from our own garden. Vine ripened tomatoes from our own garden now. And that's what makes it all worth it in the end. All the work and labor and care. Oh, that's good. That makes me happy. And like I showed you the zucchini. We've got a big monster squash over there that I've been nursing. And something else, I don't know what it is, but it's alive, so we're protecting it. And peas. We've been eating peas still. Even now, we've still been eating peas all the time in our meals. So our garden is feeding us somewhat. Then the potatoes I mentioned. Uh, we're getting some food. Not like it would have been, but next year I'll be ready. Now I know the environment here. I know the weather. I know the unpredictability. Oh yeah, we've got onions. A lot of onions we've been eating from our own garden. And I know the critters here, so we'll be able to fight everything next year a lot better. Uh, speaking of which, I had to put up more electric fence around my sunflowers because the deer have found a way to evade my electric fence out in the forest and are stripping my beautiful sunflowers, which is frustrating because um, we want to have sunflower seeds for munching on. Stripped all the leaves, eat, dropped the head on the ground, killed them, just killed them. That one had been recovering right here and had all kinds of flower heads on it, all gone. Quite frustrating and annoying, so I put up extra electrical fence around it to try to protect them from harm. 
And then down here in the garden, our rutabagas got wiped out. So it's definitely got to be a greenhouse this year, next year. It's got to be greenhouse because the nature is too, too aggressive here. Anyway, it is what it is. I've learned next year I'm better armed. And for those of you waiting on electronics experiments and projects, soon, very soon, this was full of boxes. When Melanie had me pull out all my boxes and all my papers and electronics and stuff and all my survival out of the trailer in the chalet, and I had nowhere to put it but my electronics lab, and I've been sorting and picking away at it. I almost got it cleaned, guys. So, the next step will be to show the uh, the makings of a Bedini motor, which I'm organizing and laying out right now, even as we speak. And I will be showing you everything you need to make a Bedini motor. And then, I will make a Bedini motor on the Do-It-Yourself World Electronics channel. Coming soon. So if you haven't done so, check out the Do-It-Yourself World Electronics and subscribe. And don't forget to hit the uh, little bell icon to get notifications when I upload videos. Go check it out, guys. And we got a lot of exciting things to go once I get my electronics lab cleaned back out and back in business. And thank you all for the patience, those who have waited all this time. Hey guys, Troy and Melanie from the Do-It-Yourself World and the Off-Grid Project. And we've got some packages here. I'm going to watch the camera. There's a package addressed to both of us. What do we got there, Melanie? <laughs> That's cute. Oops. It is like that. It's a oh, it's a hat scarf thing. Oh. It took me a minute to figure it out. The lighting here is weird. So, and it's got big ear, flappy ear things that go up over the top for extra warmth. Nah, <laughs> it's sort of cute. Oh, it's just big ears. It's just big ears. Okay. <laughs> We've got another package that says Melanie. Just for Melanie. There's also a box. The baby's standing on the box waiting. Yeah. I want the box. Oh, what do we got here? I'll take the letter. I made a Melissa. I made a crib sheet, also a pillow for later on, since they say not to put pillows in the crib with small babies. I hope you like it. I left a small opening for you to stuff the pillow with. Also did her name so you can stick it somewhere. Oh, okay. Southern lady with many hats. Thank you. Praying for an easy delivery for you. Well, thank you very much. Oh, and there's a box, Melanie, that says... Oh, Melanie's name is first. It says Melanie and Troy Reed. And I've got a knife. A good old trusty pocket knife, which I need to sharpen. like warm little shoes. Is that that's shoes, right? Yeah. Baby socks. Baby socks. It looks like shoes to me. See, it shows how much I know. Baby socks. I hope that shows up. The lighting in here is all above me and this is shiny plastic. 
Little baby socks. Oh, there's a letter. Hi, Melanie, Troy, and Michelle. Enjoy your gift from Ruth. Yeah, of course. <laughs> Money wants to keep the box. Hold the box up. I don't think it shows up. Oh, that hangs in there. Look at that. So you can look at that. Wow. Well, thank you, everybody. Baby ballerina. <laughs> thank you. All right, guys. I think that wraps it up. Troy and Melanie and Michelle from the Do It Yourself World and the Off Grid Project. Good night. <sighs> nice way to end the day, but it's my own little private bonfire, my own personal thing here. And right up on the top is the remains of the paper wasp nest. Now some call it hornets, some call it, I don't care what you call it. I looked it up on Google and it said they were paper wasps. Let me get my camera away from this heat. And uh, so that's what I'm calling it. I'm no expert. Somebody called it that, told me that's what they are. Anyway, so there is the remains of the nest burning in the fire, which is getting hotter and hotter. Um, there were some babies left in the uh, little um, honeycomb type pattern things. So uh, I don't want to risk with the baby on the way. I'm not going to risk us getting hurt. So they got to go. I thought they were beneficial insects and they never bothered me all these years. And now with a baby on the way, I know some people will be mad at me, but they got to go. If it's me or them, they go. The um, yellow jackets, on the other hand, are still buzzing heavy. I went inside the trailer and now you can hear it. There's thousands and thousands of them in there. So they're underneath the um, entrance to the trailer, the crawl sp space. So it's going to be hard to eradicate them. And there goes my enemy. That's it. Also a peaceful way to end the night. Good night, everybody. <laughs>